Hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the 6th of June, 2023. Today is around the table. We got myself, Damien Duportal. We got Hervé Le, Hervé Le Meur. We have Stéphane Merle, Mark White, and Bruno Verhardt. Hello, folks. Let's get started with the announcement. Weekly release. Uh, first important information, we will have a uh, dead Jenkins score weekly release, the 2408, despite being tagged on the repository, doesn't have any artifact associated. And the version 2.409 is being released. Uh, uh, too long did the trade. Uh, it's uh, we had an issue with the LDAP that's uh, obviously with the Murphy's law happened on the worst moment of the release publication that led us on a partial release. So instead of trying to fix that and forget half of the thing, it has been decided uh, with the help of uh, the really person that the usual release suspects, as I named them, uh, to trigger a brand new release and declare to. 408 dead, easier, and we should have result in one hour or less. Thanks everyone for the support on this one. Um, yeah, that's all. We are watching it and then the usual steps. Um, another announcement, in the upcoming days, we're going to proceed to a migration of the LDAP and get Jenkins Mirror public services to a new cluster. The date and time will be announced, but I think that's important enough to mention because some of the services uh, uh, here could be critical to the end users. Um, that's part of us trying to get rid of the old overlap network. Do you have other announcements? Uh, nope. Two dot. Oh, oh, actually, yes. Uh, so get.jenkins.io is going to be used by Docker containers. Yes. So I don't know if that belongs in announcements, but but it's the migration. Yeah, there later. Talk to it later. Will be announced. Uh, the Jenkins CI dash Docker image. Yeah, I I don't know that it justifies an announcement, Damien. It. Okay. Okay. Now, upcoming calendar. Unless you have other announcements. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, next weekly will be two point four hundred ten. And that should happen 13 June 2023 next week. Is that correct? Yes. I don't know for the next LTS release. I haven't looked at the calendar. 2.401.2. And it will release on, let's see, we are, I believe, release candidate in one week and uh, final release in three weeks. Final give you a release. date in just a moment so final release date 28 june in three week 28 june 28 june yes okay uh i haven't looked at the advisory but i haven't seen any mail on my inbox so yeah yeah no no, no announced no announced upcoming advisories okay and next major event known Okay, anything else to add? Let's get started on the task we were, we were able to finish. First, IRM64 not pool to start using IRM64 pods. Stefan, what are the wonderful news on the IRM64 uh, area? And we got a not pool with IRM64 on the availability zone one. And it's important because if, if it's not on the one, it's not working. 
and I also moved the, the Java doc dot Jenkins dot IO uh, application to that not pool IRM sixty four one. So it's working great. So officially Javadoc is now served by an IRM sixty four system. Yeah. Woohoo! So far so good. Saving Congrats. Money. Yeah, and helping um getting ARM sixty four to be known by more people <laughs> is a good thing from my point of view, of course. Yeah. Congrats. Um, Stefan, do we have another issue or uh, uh, are you okay to create one if we don't have that will list the upcoming candidates for that migration to ARM64? Because I'm sure we have other services there. I will really need your help to find them, but yes, we can do that. We, uh, we don't have, no. Okay, so issue to open. I, I don't think so, I don't remember. So your role is to check if we have uh, one. already one and if we don't then you we will uh, work together to select the other the criteria will be already migrated to the new cluster that requires synchronization with our vid, just to be sure we don't step on his toes mm -hmm. we can wait the end of the full migration if we don't feel uh, with that second criteria is having an AR official IRM 64 image In that case javadoc uses uh, the nginx official image and that's all we don't build a custom image for this service so any service using an official image that has an irm64 version out of the box are good candidates for that one. Oh, i thought we would put everyone and had a sub issue that need uh, to work on the on the container but okay we, we filter to only those that we can already move, okay? We can get the full list and exclude. It's, it's the okay. same thing as the pipeline matrix axis. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> to remind me that thing. <laughs> to list potential candidates for using RM64 in production. Another note here, evaluating the costs difference will be hard in the sense that we do, we know the cost of the former cluster, we know the cost of the current cluster given it's being worked on right now. So it's it will be hard to really have an order of magnitude until we have finished everything. And that will be hard to distinguish between, do we pay less because it's part of the work that Hervé did on selecting the proper node pool topology, the proper network, the proper machine size for the node pool, or is it related to IRM64? The answer will be because of both, but that will be hard to distinguish. But for if now, we... we will pay more because there is only one service on, on that node pool, which for one server is huge compared to what it has to run. True, absolutely true. But we know that one machine is clearly less. So in any case, that will be interesting. Do you have something else on the IRM64 no. subject? Okay. Hervé, no objection if Stefan starts now or do you prefer waiting for the full migration for the other service? How do you want to play it? I'll start now, I think. Okay. So Stefan, you have to really sync with the rest of the team when you will do operations. Because as you saw, we might have surprises when migrating to RM64 pod, uh, uh, not pool, sorry. So just to be sure that we we don't interact. The priority is to Hervé for the migration if there is a conflict in terms of timing. Next issue can create an account. Sorry, Belgium Air Force is training Ukrainian pilots on the F-16. So yeah, they are playing around on low level altitude. Um, I closed the issue because we never heard back from the user. That's the user who claimed that they never received the emails, but as the work that Hervé did and Stefan here, uh, we see that Mailgun or SendGrid, I, I don't remember, but our email system that we gain access to, send the email to the email provider. So we repeatedly, repeatedly ask the user to either use another email domain or contact their email administrators to see why are the email not delivered. But as 
as we saw, the email is sent and acknowledged by the, the email server of that domain. So there is nothing else we can do about that. And most of the time, the answer, uh, the user answer with a two or three weeks delay. So, yeah. Um, as we said, if they can reopen, but I don't see anything else we can do. Do you, do you see other action that I could have missed because email is not really my knowledge area? No, if you, nope. if you can see the deliver status, there is nothing you can see, you can do. Um, I think we spent uh, many, enough time with this user. He received some mails and he might have received the last one, but didn't check back, so. We, we gave them two paths they can use for being there. I, I, I'm sorry because maybe that user will want to contribute or open issues to the Jenkins project and it's slowing them down or uh, blocking them to do so, but I don't see anything else we can do here. Uh, so let's see. At least the outcome of your work area on that area with the help of Stefan is that now we are able to observe when the email are sent or not. So good job, team. That's, that's still really useful. Remove translation plugin for CI Jenkins. Are you, I might have closed this one too quickly. I just want to check with you. Uh, I think Hervé, you, you, you removed the plugin from CI Jenkins. Are you all right? Yes, but I haven't, uh, um, I didn't have the, the opportunity to, uh, to restart uh, CI Jenkins that I owe because there were uh, okay. Every time there were some core or some BOM builds. Okay. In any case, it has been restarted a few hours ago, and the plugin is not marked as installed uh, as, as, as of this morning. So in any case, the change was applied. So thanks, Harry, for taking care of this one. Puppet Master migrate virtual machine to Azure. Uh, surprise migration that wasn't planned at all last week. Um, summary, uh, as part of the Ubuntu 22.04 campaign that was planned, uh, we updated the OSU OSL machine with the plan of we try Edamame and uh, Lettuce. That went well. We started to upgrade uh, the Puppet Master VM, which failed and never restarted. We had to ask OSU OSL for help. They helped really quickly. We were able to finish the update to Ubuntu 22.04, only to discover that Puppet Enterprise Master doesn't support Ubuntu Jummy. Open source version does though. And by mistake, I checked Puppet open source agent and controller, assuming that the enterprise version would have the same requirements. That's not true. <laughs> and once the virtual machine has been upgraded, to the latest LTS version of Ubuntu, downgrading it back to Bionic. Uh, no, uh, not Bionic, Ubuntu 20 Focal. Uh, that wasn't possible or too risky. So the emergency choice, because we weren't able to deploy new configuration changes across our virtual machines due to that problem. Uh, after discussing quickly with the team, I took the decision to create a new virtual machine on Azure to host the Puppet Master, that machine is using Puppet 2004. That will that should be the only machine um, to stay on Focal. Because the, the goal was also to stop using Bionic as much as possible since it's out of date. That machine has been created. The good outcome of this one is that now, since we have sensitive credential on that virtual machine, we control this credential on Azure Virtual Machine. And that led the former virtual machine on OSU OSL to be used like Lettuce or Edamame for something else. They are not used right now. Uh, one of the proposal I have, and I'm raising right now, is to tell OSU OSL that they, we, do a, they, we ask them for a snapshot of the virtual machine and they can release this machine to avoid consuming resources on their cluster. And if we need resources on the side, we send them a request for brand new machines that would avoid us to have legacy machines with legacy system that has been upgraded all over the years that will release 
uh, the resources for them so someone else can use them on another open source product. And if we need more, we can ask them, but that's to, to play the boys could rule that clean up uh, on a better way. Because it's been two years that we say, we have this machine doing nothing and we haven't done anything because we don't have the time or the resource. Would that be something viable for you? Yeah, plus uh, one from me. That will be less machines for us to manage, less code to manage. And since Bruno and I have a task to contact OCOSL to ask them for, uh, let's say, exotic CPU machines, that will be a sort of trade-off. We let them release resources and we use something else. Um, I propose we will do on two different email thread though, because ideally, if they can uh, share with us the snapshot of the machine before deleting, we could put this snapshot on the archive bucket on Azure that Hervé created, which is encrypted. So in any case, if we need an old, old thing for whatever reason, we would have the file system of this machine available. Looks good for you folks. Okay, yes. so we'll take care of opening issue. Shoot to release lettuce et amame and radish with disk snapshots to archives. Any question? No, okay. Uh, getting an authorized with CD setup with code build cloud plugin. So that one is related to the trusted CI migration that uh, effectively happened Friday. So a user was blocked because it took more than the three or four hours before uh, expiration of the CD credential to GFrog. The there is a job named repository permission updater in trusted CI that runs regularly, which role is to update and rotate this credential. So since we were migrating the instance and we took more time than the two interval of run for these jobs, that had an impact on the users. That was already explained on the mailing list and status. So thanks for everyone guiding the user in that direction. Uh, at the end of the migration, we ran the job successfully. The user confirmed they were okay. So uh, no problem. That was a, an outage. Sorry for the inconvenience. That was a short term notice for that migration. We already noticed the morning for the afternoon. Um, so room for improvement for uh, uh, for the announcement next time, but outside this, nothing special there, unless someone has a proposal or something to point here. Okay, um, related to trusty.ci migration to Azure. Uh, CI Jenkins plugin bomb agent are not allocated. That issue has been closed. Uh, but what we tend to see is that when the CI Jenkins IO controller restarts, it looks like that there is a, a blocking somewhere inside the controller that forbid Jenkins to try to create new pod agents. Uh, Stefan did a, a complete exhaustive job about checking if it wasn't related to the spot virtual machine allocation in the Kubernetes cluster that supports the bomb builds, that wasn't. We didn't see any problem on that on the Azure console. There weren't any uh, limits in pod quota CPU memory. No error were happening on the auto scaler. Uh, we didn't see any issue on the lower level infrastructure. But what we saw is that Jenkins stopped trying to create pod after a certain amount of time. And the restart, after the restart, it tried nothing. While the other jobs were still creating uh, new pods. So that could be related to a behavior of the Kubernetes plugin or the bomb builds. These are the two things. Because we have right now three Kubernetes clouds set up on CI Jenkins IO. Each Kubernetes cloud has its own Oki HTTP uh, thread pool for the Kubernetes client. So either the problem is located on the way the Kubernetes client works inside the plugin, and that could explain why that cloud is 
it's somehow uh, facing a peaks of activity, a restart, and it breaks something. Or that could be related to the setup of the bomb build job that might not be set up to survive the control or restart. And in that case, that might be a bug uh, in the way that the agent and the process should be stopped and released. So there is something weird, and we don't know there is a lock or an issue here. here. It's hard to pin it to infrastructure at first sight, but maybe there is something non-obvious here. Um, I propose, as we mentioned on the issue, when we see uh, such problem that we collect a thread, a thread dump of the controller, as we saw as a team exercise earlier today, collecting a support bundle from the top level item on the left is enough because the thread dumps are present. Then we we keep this bundle and analyze them afterwards. When you see that problem, a controller restart or reload from disk, the, that one is the safer reloading from disk, uh, unblock the problem most of the time. If the reload doesn't work, don't hesitate to restart the controller. Had a message, a shutdown message, restart, and then it should start again the bomb builds. That one, coincides with the LTS upgrade of the controller. That might be the, the low level issue. Changing the core version failed to restart the build at the restart. Do you have in something else to say about this one? So it's closed because the problem after a restart was solved and the bomb builds are back again. Invite Mustafa into the Jenkins Infra plugin in scoring. Thanks, Hervé. I think you took care of this one. I think that's usual operation. Is there anything to say on this one? Thanks. And we had an LTS release last week. So of course, we upgraded all of our controller less than 24 hours after the official release. Thanks everyone involved on this. Um, we are an issue related to accounts. Someone did a mistake, mistake or did not answer and was trying to reset the password of an account that doesn't exist. So hence my, it looks like a mistake between our system and someone else's system. Thanks everybody for taking care of this one. And now back to the tasks that we are working on. Uh, for each task as usual, we have to state if we can continue working on the next milestone. Uh, we'll need to leverage the amount of tasks I'm working on because Friday uh, I'm, I might be off. Uh, I don't know if some of you are have days off for the upcoming milestone. Yes, uh, I'm uh, in PTO uh, from the 15th of June to the 20th. 15 to 20. Yeah. Okay, so that shouldn't impact the next milestone, but the milestone after, is that correct? Yeah, well, sure, sure, yeah. Okay, Sorry. just wanted to be sure I understood because I'm yeah. bad with number in English. <laughs> cool. So good, good to know for next week. Um, okay, so let's get started. Jenkins CI failing for Jenkins plugin after changes in Jenkins file. There is a word issue here. Um, a user is opening pull requests and uh, was set up as administrator of the plugin repository, but his pull request was still seen as untrusted by CI Jenkins IU. I'm sure we missed something obvious. Um, so we replayed multiple times his pull requests that changed the Jenkins file because his goal was to test that pull, that Jenkins file change. So it was locked, hence their need for asking. Initially, they weren't, uh, they, they didn't have the correct permission. They weren't using the correct Git commits system. That has been fixed and still issue. Um, if they merge the pull request, the problem should be gone. And Tim uh, has invited the user. So the user should be able, at least after merging the pull request to, to again, try something else. Now that the pull request mark the user as untrusted, there is no way uh, this could be changed as per Tim. Um, I'm not sure of myself. I remember that we were able 
to uh, just rescan the repository that should change that behavior, rescanning pull requests. But Tim says no, so I might have confused memory of what we did on Infra CI a few months ago. So the proposal is we let the user merge to the main, create a new release, and then open a new pull request with their new permission to see where the problem come from. Uh, we check it's in related to yesterday GitHub issue. That issue happens in two weeks. And most probably it's the, we might have an edge case where the user is a direct admin of the repository, but outside the Jenkins organization, so maybe GitHub reports wrong uh, wrong collaborator status when it's scanned by Jenkins. But that, that's just an out of the wild assumption. I don't know really what is happening. We don't see any obvious error here. Uh, so I hope what Tim did by setting the proper permission would help and would help the user. So I propose that we add this issue for watching only. I don't think there are any action expected. So we add it to the next milestone. Is that okay for you? Okay. Let's watch the result of permission plus merge of the successful. Hervé, can you give us a status of uh, what happened on the migration of public uh, cluster? Yes, um, let me check which. Uh, we have uh, only four services uh, remaining to migrate. Um, CLDAP service currently uh, in migration. And then we have uh, Mirrorbits and uh, public site and uh, Jenkins.io. Okay, so four services left. Cool remaining to migrate almost there then yes jenkins.io and plugin site um so that means all the other were migrated successfully uh um, yeah go ahead yeah i'm looking at the issue to remind me which one has been migrated uh, since okay I think I did some and then I handed over when you went back from uh, your PTO, is that correct? Yes. So uplink was migrated, but I think we mentioned it's no. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. Don't yes, Jenkins correct. that I you and the report the Jenkins that I Reports accounts were okay. And uh, uplink. And uplink. Uh, which is the one you want over to me. Okay. Uplink. Account app and reports were migrated with success. So right now you are working on LDAP, as we mentioned earlier during the meeting. Yes, we had uh, we recreated a new storage account uh, to store the LDAP backup, mm -hmm. and doing so, we are going to write some issue and. Uh, uh, configuration. Um, yes. And by the way, don't forget to close the status mm, once no. you have finished later today. Yeah. Once, uh, yeah, I want to deploy uh, LDAP on the new cluster before. Yep. Uh, new LDAP installation required. Oh, what did I do? I changed. So as you say, the um, file storage, that is important, I think uh, more for Stefan to know. We created the storage account and as Hervé uh, found, we also need to specify file storage, which is a sub element. Storage accounts allows you to create buckets, which are blob storage, but they can be on different types. And we need the specific type of Storage uh, file storage file storage maps to SMB mount uh, on the current in status. Case, at yeah. in, the alternative being an NFS file storage, but on premium storage accounts. Um, installation required the file storage sub element of storage account to be 
created fixed in Terraform Azure. Uh, yes. The file share, it's not a file storage. The term yes. used by yes. Azure is. File share, good point. Okay. Next so now we. To, on the new LDAP release on public ATS, I'll try to restore uh, a recent uh, existing dump. Okay. If then. Uh, it works. I'll um, I'll uh, continue the migration by uh, switching uh, account the Jenkins that I owe, uh, C name uh, to uh, the migration status announcement while uh, working on uh, the, the next phase, the next steps. So no writes uh, will happen on LDAP base. And I will be able to do a backup of the existing one and restore it to the new one without any new write or modification. No right. Then I'll restore, I'll switch back mm -hmm. the, the name. I couldn't uh, the Jenkins IO to its correct location. Perfect. Good to go. Uh, that will be tomorrow. Don't forget I will be on the road tomorrow. So let's over communicate, but that, that, that looks good. Any other question on this one? Okay, I propose that obviously we keep that one on the upcoming milestone. Next one, CI Jenkins IO use a new VM instance type. Um, so the goal is to transplant every changes until the last one uh, that has been done on the new trusted VM on Azure to the new CI Jenkins IO virtual machine that is not used yet. Once validated and bootstrapped, there will be a requirement for an initial uh, uh, data copy. I tried to take a snapshot of the current CI Jenkins IO. I was able to create a new data disk from that and mount it on the new v VM, but Terraform definition of data disk requires you to define the snapshots, the data disk, and the stat write down explicitly that the data disk come from the snapshots, which is not the easier way because after we want to delete the snapshot because we won't need it anymore in a few weeks once migrated. And then that will uh, let the data disk in a state where removing the snapshots recreate the data disk because the reference doesn't exist anymore. So it will be recreated empty. That's really weird behavior, but yeah. So what will be done there is that I will use the snapshot for a temp second data disk that will be mounted manually on the virtual machine and I will run an air sync locally. That air sync will be fast. They I don't mean, plan a, a kind of merge between the snapshot and the hard drive? You create a, a, data, a hard drive, a data disk from a snapshot. Yeah. But that data disk must be managed as code, right? And yes. And on the as code definition, there is a property which either which is either empty or copy. If you try to import the data disk from the data disk created from the snapshot, Terraform says that attribute must be copy because it has been initialized with the uh, attribute as copy. That attribute is immutable. So that means on Terraform you need to define copy and say setting copy required to add a second attribute, which is source ID, which will be the ID of the snapshot. If you remove the snapshot, the definition is checked and says and... does not exist. Okay. So yeah. So that's why, yeah, let's create a brand new one and do our sync and that will be okay. Yeah. More secure. Um, so yes, so I keep working on that. That's my top priority. The goal is to have a new virtual machine for CI Jenkins IO as soon as possible. Uh, data disk sync to do. And related to the um, artifact, I think artifact caching proxy and reliable uh, issue, um, we will need to migrate to inbound agent on the new network subsystem to follow the network changes of the instance that would need to be done before migrating fully. 
So agent Azure VM agent to inbound in the new subnet. These are the two required tasks before planning and announcing the migration that will mostly happen in two weeks. Migrate trusted CI to Azure that has been done successfully. There are one last tasks. Uh, there were two last tasks uh, as for this week. One has been done. The network has been restricted and checked everywhere. Uh, the last element will be uh, that might be a subsequent uh, issue uh, to select the proper size for the virtual machine ephemeral agents to use the same as CI Jenkins IO that we changed a few weeks ago. Because right now we are using cost instances and we don't have the same quota on the new region where the new VM is. Because before the AWS trusted CI was spawning ephemeral agent on US East. But right now we need to be on the brand new subnet and everything is on the US East too. So the quota between region are different. So that should be a puppet configuration change, one test and the, the, uh, the issue will be closable. It's one mile, updates, VM agent quota or type for US East 2. So yes, nice work, uh, Stefan. Thanks for the handover. We were able to, to land this one. It's working well since Friday. So um, now we will have to watch the request from security team to access trusted CI because they will need to provide uh, their public IP. That's a new change from the former instance. The VMs has been stopped on AWS, but not deleted. I propose that we wait uh, until the next either LTS release or security core release. So that will probably end of the June. So we'll delete it in July. Any objection? Okay, so that one is obviously on the next milestone. That's only one last change. Ubuntu 22.04 upgrade campaign. Um, right now for this one, uh, we have one candidate that will be CERT CI Jenkins IO. Uh, the proposal is to do an uh, inline upgrade uh, because it's on Azure. So the easiest way is taking a snapshot of the system. Since we control the virtual machine, we do the upgrade. We change the puppets infra config to use Docker the Docker 2204 uh, version, and that should be okay. I propose to, if anyone is interested, I propose to pair on this one because I did uh, most of that work alone and not as a team last week. So better to uh, work it as a team. Um, upgrade to Kubernetes 1.25. I've posed this one due to the Puppet Trusted and uh, LDAP migration. Uh, I propose to put that one back uh, out of the milestone because I, except reading the change log and preparing the next step, no one will have too much much time on this one. And I propose that we go back to starting a breeding cluster in two or three weeks, depending on our availability. Because if Hervé is off, is on PTO, maybe we won't have time, Stefan, but maybe we can start with the DOKS cluster eventually. Uh, AKS will uh, stop proposing Kubernetes 1.24 end of July. I don't remember for digital ascent, but uh, I guess it will be end of June. Uh, so yeah, back to backlog. Uh, Hervé, did you have time to spend on the install and configure Datadog plugin on CI Jenkins IO? No, but uh... Uh, no time. Uh, I have to borrow you some time to check on that. Okay. And we'll have them. Okay. Um, as Stefan and I saw, we might need to prioritize these tasks once LDAP okay. is done because there is a lot. And when I say a lot, it's a lot of uh, error logs on CI Jenkins IO due to the plugin trying unsuccessfully to contact the agent. That's Maybe the default. I can 
Maybe yes. I can try to change uh, Statadoc plugins configuration on ci.jenkins.io to see if I can. If you have a solution it. for that, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm well. not sure it will be that easy. Um, are we using the plugin? Because the the most the simplest case will be uninstalling it. But yep. if you find uh, just one configuration setup that will stop uh, the plugin to contact train to contact the agent, that might be worth it to avoid triggering a restart. Um, if you need time, uh, we can work on this. Thursday should be okay for me. Okay. Let's think on this. Thursday. Uh, support Linux container when running on Windows VM. My initial manual tests, I wasn't able to uh, have a, a running Docker desktop. I was able to install Docker desktop, but it was always failing to start the Linux uh, WSL backend. Um, I haven't tried installing WSL before. I was assuming that Docker desktop was using it. And I guess that's the problem I had on the manual tests. Uh, so maybe I should just install WSL, spin up Debian, and then start desktop. Uh, back to backlog for me, because uh, I have uh, too much thing and I haven't had spent too much time on this one. So unless someone want to try by themselves, the goal is to have Docker desktop up and running on Windows Server 2022, ideally, uh, and as code with Packer image. No volunteer. <laughs> I won't be able to work in this one because I will need a Windows machine. That's a closer feedback loop to try things for me. Yes, I installed Windows Server on my desktop. But anyone want to, wanting to work is welcome. <laughs> Artifact caching proxy and reliable related to CI Jenkins IO agent on VM migration to a new network, still progressing. Um, I want to orally ponder that the fact that the ACP is still working well as per uh, Hervé work on Datadog that allow him to pause the log and check the amount of data that is served by the ACP instead of uh, the repository. We are between eight and 12 terabytes per month, approximately, of data that is not used. Uh, yes, it's yeah. it uh, was five, four, four, between uh, four to five terabytes last week. Is that correct? Yes. That's, that's, that's uh, real metrics. Uh, but yes, uh, extra, so that's a, that's a lot. So ACP is still doing a lot of work and saving precious bandwidth for GFROG. Uh, I didn't add time and we absolutely need to help the user add Jitpack to repository available. So um, in order to unblock the user, we need to add a new exception on the ACP uh, repository ID. I don't remember if it's that simple. I think there was some details. Uh, Is it okay yeah, just to evaluate can... your needs? Mm -hmm. Was binary published to JITPACK. So we have an external artifact repository and it works for local builds as it did for until hmm. we, okay. So it's probably that, but I don't remember if there was some message later below. Uh, so they try to use the jar dependency trick. So you point Maven to a local directory that is used along the other repositories. If you follow the naming convention that we, we had it, that will be ignored and won't use ACP and will use the local files. But yeah, the issue is that user wanting to upload jar on Artifactory, but they don't have the permission. Uh, yes, they propose to use it as a proxy, that will mean adding one other mirror. But right now we are trying to restrain the amount of mirror. So proposal is to add um, instead a new exception for that repository. That okay. means de defining eventually an ID, a conventional ID. Yes. We say we can add, it's... Yeah, I would have to propose a pull request in the plugin pump to use a local repository, but uh, 
a repository uh, uh, named local, like we've done previously. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. Yep. What, what do you think about, since we can use pattern on the exception to test, so first we I propose we add JIT pack to unblock them, and then we, we should be able to propose a convention for developers if the ID of the repository on the POM XML is, uh, I don't know, uh, non-cached uh, dash something that yeah. could be uh, or external or non-Jenkins, or, you know, you know, we could use a pattern, generic pattern yeah. if they had a certain prefix that will automatically not be cached. What do you think? Yeah. Um, there is a probe, uh, uh, I've suggested a probe to the applicant scoring, detecting a third, uh, third party repository. So. We could use that to see and check uh, what these plugins are using as ID for their external repository. Yep. To avoid ACP caching um, third party repositories, uh, let's add cheat pack as exception on short term. Uh, proposal for uh, Plugin health probe or third party repo. Is that okay for everyone for this one? Is there a proposal? Is there is already a pull request for this proposal? Okay, so can I let you update the notes with the yeah. pair? Yeah, uh, sure. sure. Sure, sure. Okay. Are you okay to take uh, this one, Harvey? Is that okay yes. for you? Cool, thanks. So I'm adding it to the next milestone. Assess artifactory bandwidth reduction options. So that one was open by Mark. Uh, forgot. So we will need to plan brownouts. A brownout is a blackout, is a planned blackout of a service on a short amount of time to see if everything explodes or to identify what could be problem that we weren't able to identify at first step. The first brownout will be trying on Gfrog to set the Gigit proxy repository. It's a mirror of a, a real life repository. So you use Artifactory in front of this repo. Uh, we want to set it private and check if it's effectively available without authentication through the public virtual repository. If that works, we might want to switch all of the mirror repositories such as Maven repo one, but all those other as private to forbid user to publicly access this repository directly, to avoid to forbid this user to use us as a free and free QoS mirror. Don't get uh, don't get too safe on this one because once user will discover they can still use the repo Jenkins CI slash public because it's a virtual that includes all of these dependencies, then part of the traffic will shift to that repository. But the goal, but since we don't see it, I mean, that the person <laughs> who will do that, <laughs> they won't do it accidentally. But the user that are using this one might are doing it accidentally. So better to shut down these accesses and have a centralized point and then iterate and see the impact on the bandwidth reduction. So we will need to announce the blackout. Ideally, the gigit should happen this week for planning the, the Maven repo one next week and the other. We, so we should be middle of June with a first feedback to give to Gfrog. Good for everyone. So I will update, I will comment it after uh, last exchange with uh, Mark and then uh, if it's okay and we will proceed uh, most probably Thursday afternoon morning for the US. That's the proposal I make here. Okay for everyone. Proposal of first brown out. Thursday, we are six eight during morning US time. Um Matt Tomo GitHub Docker repo, I assume it's related to a new issue. So uh, Gavin proposes help to switch the, uh, from Google Analytics to uh, self-managed Matomo instance. 
to collect the visit metrics from plugin side, Jenkins IO, stories, and eventually other static websites. Um, so he, he dug up uh, uh, the work he tried and never finished a few months or years ago. So the idea is to have our own instance of Matomo. I'm not sure why we need a custom image for the Docker unless Matomo doesn't provide one. Um, we have another issue in triage state uh, that will be about installing the M chart. Uh, we might need to, uh, if it's okay for everyone, uh, we will update on this one and we will link everything because the other one is mixed on the Google Analytics. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I need to clean up the issues and follow up on the initial assessment from Gavin. We need to assess the amount of storage, the requirement for database, the requirement for the entry point. Do we need the back end, the front end, just to be sure we use the correct ingress? Uh, Gavin already gave us the required answer, so you need to assess them as a team, just to be sure we use the correct uh, storage and persistence setting. Is there any question about the goal of Matomo? Now, is there any question about uh, the service in itself to self-host instead of Google Analytics? Now, is there any question about the subject at all? I will mm. not ask any question about the name. <laughs> <laughs> Mamoto, Matomo, Matamo. <laughs> yeah, I discussed with you quickly about uh, other alternatives like plausible or... Oh, good point. Uh, but... I think since uh, Kevin already knows Matomo and is willing to deploy it, uh, I think we should mm -hmm. stay with Matomo. Maybe other uh, can be lighter, but yeah. Issue to update. Um, it won't be a lot anyway. Other alternatives uh do, do you have other names because i don't know that area uh right now plausible i i don't remember the other i had uh, two or three in mind before but i just remember plausible right now yeah are these alternatives self-hosted or yeah, are there self oss self-hosted as we have enough trust in Gavin's work, he used Matomo for the past 18 months for plugin site, additionally to our Google Analytics. We can proceed. Does it capture uh, what would you say, Hervé? Is that okay for you? Yes, sure. So that means installing a new release of a service that we need to... F it looks like it will be installed on the new public Kates cluster. Yes, uh, we have to... Yep. We have to check if it can work with PostgreSQL mm -hmm. and not only MySQL, so we then could use... Uh, the current uh, Postgre server we are using for other services to add okay. a database in it. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, use our existing Postgres. Worst case, we still have flexible MySQL in a server instance on Azure. Worst case. I'd... <laughs> that would be a fallback if it doesn't work. Um, Bruno, Stéphane, just for you. Yeah. I'm not sure that will be an, a good candidate at first sight for IRM because it's running PHP and I have absolutely no knowledge of PHP support for IRM64. That might work, that might not, I don't know. So if you want to try on IRM64, we have to check with Gavin, but I guess Gavin was using DigitalOcean since he worked there. Yeah. So I'm not sure he has IRM64 virtual machine for his tests. That could be interesting to evaluate, at least for the front and middleware stages. Yeah, of course, I've got some ARM64 machines on Oracle Cloud Feature I could use for the test, so why not? Yeah. 
it's not mandatory, it's not urgent, it's just bonus, pure the, bonus. The with no priority. official Matomo uh, Docker image is uh, IRM compliant. Oh, nice. So that could be interesting. Uh, only MySQL is supported. Yep. Oh, crap. OK. It's so nice. that MySQL. so we will assess in details, but that means we will need to create a, a MySQL flexible instance on Terraform Azure. Uh, and we should update saying, oh, maybe good candidate for IRM64. Other question about Matomo? Okay, recent plugin bomb release fail after an expected long time. I think that one was fixed. I thought it was fixed. Oh, it's about the build time. Okay, so that one required the work on the CI Jenkins IO migration to be evaluated again. So I propose that we move this one on the backlog, unless someone wants to debug it, <laughs> of course. Back to backlog requires CI Jenkins IO migration. Okay. Let's check together the new issue marked as tray edge, if it's okay for you. Oh, I was particularly talky today. Um, four new tray edge issue. We had the CI Jenkins I repository scan fail with a stack tray. So that one should be closable. We'll take care of this one. Uh, yesterday, GitHub uh, changed something on their API and all the Jenkins instance of the world using the GitHub branch source API, so native GitHub, uh, were showing that error when technical user set up for the GitHub scanning, whether organization or multi-branch, had the maintain uh, had the maintain status, or had I don't I'm not sure if it's a user with the maintain status or the maintain status uh, themselves. I've heard, I've seen two different cases, so I'm not absolutely sure of that one. But we had issue that was on GitHub side, but they were really efficient. And once the error was reported, so always report error when you have such error such problem. Uh, they roll back the change and they took additional measures so that it won't happen again. So the issue is closable as far as I can tell. Uh, Gotta remove the tray edge that was part of the milestone this week. Package availability dashboard is empty. Uh, I think it's a consequence of the cleanup uh, that has been done on Datadog. Uh, we have a package, uh, sorry, a dashboard that is relying on a metric that doesn't exist anymore? Is it because there is a specific label? Is it because we change the metric because we stop collecting that metric? I don't know. This has to be checked. Um, that's a public dashboard. So that's a dashboard we see on Datadog that has been published. So it, it can be seen publicly. I think it's on status Jenkins IO. So it's not High priority, but yeah, if uh, anyone has time to check, I propose we add it as a bonus on the upcoming milestone. Is that okay for everyone? Yes, I can take, uh, I'll take it. I will let you assign it yeah. to yourself if you have time. Um, yes, I'm removing try edge for this one. I've opened an issue while trying to migrate a link realize that we have a server, which is a single server that cannot be replicated. And that has an EV database. It takes seven to eight hours to dump the data and three to four hours to restore it. On an ID optimized page dump on a machine with 16 uh, CPU all used at 100% during the dump. So highly parallelized. Uh, mainly because the structuration of the, the data table is weak. There is one big table with tons of records. So there is no way you can parallelize. We could try to create the proper index in the future to have a improved dump time restore, but the most efficient way will be migrating to a flexible server. Um, Azure has a server side migration tool for that um, for less than, for 
80 to 100 gigabytes of data on the database, they, they claim to uh, one hour only migration with uh, the service being shut down. Clearly way more efficient than us doing a client side uh, PG dump. So the proposal is that we work on migrating a link with a outage, planned outage to a flexible server and eventually either uh, migrate the database from flexible server to our current instance, or we can directly migrate to the new flex to our current instance. I haven't checked in details if both are possible or if we need a two-step process. Why migrating from flexible to flexible? Because these instances or from feature to flexible. Yes, but the flexible server allows you to uh, create replication between multiple flexible instances. So that's why I assume the two time process. First, we create oh, yeah. a new flexible and then we migrate it to our current one. But eventually the migration tool allows that if you already have a flexible instance, I don't know. I propose that this one goes to the backlog because uh, we have to finish the, the public migration right. Unless someone is ready to take this one, how do you feel about this one? Oh no. What do you <laughs> I believe this one will be better a better fit during the summer with less activity. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm re removing triage. Is there any question about this one? Are you sure there is less activity during the summer because people will have time to do some some open source work? Oh, I mean for us. <laughs> oh, <okay>. not the <laughs> users, <laughs> because in any case that will be one to two hours outage. So. <laughs> Yeah, but good point. <laughs> Got it. Um, another one, expiration of the digital and PAT. I'm taking this one since I'm the only one with the MFA access, alas. Uh, so if it's okay for you, I'm adding it and I will do it uh, later today. Good for you? Yes. Removing the triage. Do you have other new issues or things to add on the pipe? Okay, there's a lot of trades to be done here. Okay. Something else to add to the upcoming milestone? Something else to say? Okay, so I'm stopping the recording. So for people watching us, Bye -bye. see you uh, stopping first. Screen sharing, now stopping recording. See you next week.